One by one, his former followers are beginning to tell tales of alleged deceit. The latest, Mary Elizabeth Turk of Dallas, who says Tilton promised to heal her cancer if she would give him $1,000. She almost died waiting. He said, I've got the faith. All you need to do is obey and send the money. And he said, because he was God's prophet. She was so swayed by Tilton's promises of a miracle, she stopped her medical treatment. Several months later, Mary died from colon cancer. The doctor that was her oncology specialist, when she was in the hospital taking her radiation and her chemotherapy, said that if she had received medical care in time, she could have been cured, which is a strong word in cancer. She felt that because of the constant bombardment of personal mailings that Robert Tilton was so personally involved with her and her case and was monitoring every bit of it and was so concerned about her that he was powerful enough of a personality that he convinced her that she was going to receive a healing. Every prayer request that comes in that gets into our mail, I personally pray over. On flyers mailed out to the viewers, Tilton urges them to place their hand on the paper and send it in. He then promises to place his hand on that same spot as he does a special prayer. While Tilton has said that all the miracles are medically documented, in a deposition once, Tilton was asked by a lawyer, is there anyone else that you have published their name that you claimed has received healing that's been documented, medically speaking, as a result of your having prayed for them. Tilton's answer, no. I've had about three or four of those in the last month. Well, it's crystal clear that these con artists don't really care about you. All they really care about is your cash. Well, welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me, it comes directly from God's Word. And before we get started, I'm going to ask that you subscribe to my channel and give this episode a thumbs up. Today, I'm going to shine a spotlight on fake healers, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I mean faith healers, who perform false miracles, emotionally manipulate crowds, tell made-up stories, and take your money. This is a business, and you don't get meetings or you don't get booked back unless you have a gimmick. Or as the evangelists say, it's a ministry. It's incredible. They'll say, oh, brother so-and-so, he's got the ministry of laying on of hands, or he's got the ministry of prophecy. But that's a gimmick, and the guys that have the gimmicks get the big meetings and do good. <laughs> Let's start off with the most famous faith healer, Benny Hinn, who also tells a ton of false prophecies and preaches the prosperity gospel. I have never lied to you. Never. I never will. I'd rather die than lie to God's people. Yeah, Houston, we got a problem here. It might be a little fakery going on. A perfect healing. So they must be healed. Exactly. So if she's not healed, if she's not healed, then we got a problem. We have a problem. Do you know something about it that I don't know? Well, we know nobody called this woman's doctor before Benny ran and reran this miracle healing on TV. We know one of those children is not even hers. And we know the lady has not been healed of AIDS because just this week we had her tested to find out. So he couldn't heal a guy, a lady with AIDS. Maybe he can heal this person with polio. Hmm. God has just healed her. Healed her of what, Pastor? Polio. This woman who said she had polio and would never walk again, she and her friends say she just climbed out of her wheelchair and walked. Someday somebody's going to do that. And what are you going to say then? I don't know. I can't tell you now. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. Oh, yes, it has. Remember that woman supposedly cured of polio? Pastor Benny knows it made for a great episode of his TV show. He knows it probably helped squeeze even bigger donations from his flock. But there's something he doesn't know. That woman works for us. Woman doesn't have polio, never did. Then why did she say she had? We put her up there to see if he could tell her story was not true, to see if it would matter, to see if he would ever check. This is insane. I mean, really. Where anywhere in the Bible did Jesus or the apostles go around swinging their coat, knocking people over, or taking their hand and smacking them on the forehead to knock them to the ground, or yelling, fire, you know, when they healed somebody? No. This is a circus. This is a show. It's not biblical. It's blasphemy. And why do they do it? They do it so they can make money. That's really what happens because at the end of every night of these things you're going to see, they pass around offering buckets so you can fill it. You can empty your wallet and fill their pockets. It's lunacy. But you have to know in the Bible, when Jesus healed, it was immediate and full and complete. 
You didn't have to wait for it. You didn't have to step into it. You didn't have to do anything to get it. No. Jesus grew limbs. He raised the dead. He gave blind people their sight. People who couldn't walk, he allowed them to walk again. Okay? Nothing, nothing absolutely like the buffoonery you're about to see. Are you ready for God to overhaul those knees? We were seeing a postman named Don Hanvey from San Francisco who has been healed now by 11 different faith healers of nine different diseases in seven different cities and under two genders because as Bernice Manikoff, this man was healed of ovarian cancer twice by two different prominent healers and he now has the healthiest ovaries of any postman certainly in San Francisco, I can assure you. Right now, Jesus, let... Oh, hallelujah, he's not going to need... Yeah, that man was uh, like we call paid actor. Yeah, that's not real. Now we're going to see Todd White's clip sped up quite a bit and looped back and forth. Now this is where we can see what's really going on here. The leg on our right is supposed to be the short leg, and this is the leg which should be miraculously growing, but it's not. Look at the leg on our left. That's where all the action is. That's what's actually being manipulated. You can see that Todd is actually pivoting or shifting the foot of the so-called long leg so that the heels match. Now, he's doing this very slowly over time, but it's painfully obvious when you speed up the clip. This is nothing but a parlor trick, which got Todd White started in the first place. He started by pulling people's legs, and guess what? He's still pulling people's legs even more today. Put your hand on your head like that. Ball spots, I call you gone. Uh -huh. Hair grow. Uh -huh. Hair grow. <laughs> so where's the proof that anybody grew any hair? I mean, if we all had that power, I could be like, zits, I call you gone. Muscles grow. <laughs> That's just nonsense, not biblical. The problem is most faith healers, they get you hooked by telling fairy tales, big whoppers of a stories that, you know, and it preys on the vulnerable and the gullible. We've seen six people raised from the dead. The dead man began to move. We've seen midgets grow. We've seen arms and legs that stop growing because the growth cells that stop. Mandarabasata. I don't make this stuff up. They also manipulate you by pretending to have some kind of divine revelation from God. Ooh, boy. God and them are BFFs, you know. But it's all lies. And here they are being exposed. We discovered that before every service, Grant and his associates circulate informally among the friends and family of the sick, making notes or even casually interviewing the people who will later be healed. We saw Grant gather information on more than 35 people he later seemed to identify by revelation from God. And last but not least, here comes Peter Popoff, who we, a lot of people thought the Holy Spirit was giving him divine revelation, but it's not, it's someone else. Hello, Jody Dean, Jody Dean, Jody, Jody, Dean, Jody Dean. No, she should be right there on your right side. Okay, she lives at four two six seven Masterson. Four two six seven Masterson. I can see the angels of God all around your house. See, faith healers always use gimmicks to make them seem godlike, to make them feel like they have a special power. They glow in the dark, they're superheroes. Fire on him from the top of his head. We saw Grant walk up to this man during the service and hold up his cane. He healed him and told him to run down the aisle. The crowd thunders applause. But let's look at that again. Grant isn't grabbing the cane of the man. He's grabbing the cane of the woman in the next seat. Outside, the man told us his problem was with his arm. He had never had any trouble walking. That was my cane. Oh. That was the lady. Their job is to make you think that they have some supernatural authority. COVID-19. COVID-19. I'm blown. On you. On you. You are destroyed forever. You are, you are destroyed, destroyed forever. forever. And you will never be back. Wow, Kenneth. Did you realize that COVID didn't go anywhere? <laughs> you didn't do jack squat to COVID. 
I'm sorry. It's still around. It's still a real thing. Praise God. Yeah, that's him going through you right now. Yes, it is. Glory to God. You're not bound to this chair. The day will come. You'll walk out of it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Now then, you guys, just help him up. Help him up. Power of God's all over him. He's not hurt. He's not hurt. Praise the God. Praise the Lord. Not wanting to draw attention to this colossal failure, Kenneth Copeland simply moves on. Praise the Lord God. Praise the Lord God. And towards the end of the service, you can see this same poor guy still wheelchair bound. What an epic failure. I mean, these people can't cure a hangnail. I don't know why anyone would believe the nonsense of these people. It's been proven over and over how false they are. See, they're not Christ-like. They're hurting people. They're robbing people. They're lying to people. And money is their God. Money is their idol. Money is their focus. See, the problem is that people are so desperate these days to be healed or to be free from different ailments and things that they struggle with. And so when the healing doesn't take place, guess what these faith healers tell him? Well, you know, you just have to wait for it. Or you didn't have enough faith. That is devastating. Those are lies. That's not true. Please understand that people are being destroyed emotionally, spiritually, and physically. People have lost their lives going to faith healers, trusting in these con artists. Now, I do want you to understand Nowhere in the Bible does Jesus ever promise that healing will take place this side of heaven. Now, does God still heal today? Absolutely. But it's when he chooses. And it's according to his will. It's not because we decreed and declared it. It's not because we went to some faith healer and paid them a bunch of money and stayed at their crusade and got emotionally manipulated for hours. No. Jesus is the healer, and maybe he's allowing sickness to persist to teach us something, to cause us to run to him, not to run to Benny Hinn or Kenneth Copeland or Todd White. Look what 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 2 and 3 says. It says that pastors and elders are to shepherd the flock, not lie to the flock. They're to protect the flock, not mislead them. And they're not to do this for dishonest gain. They're to be examples of Christ. That's what it's all about. And please know that the only examples you saw here today are common criminals that should be put behind bars.